So this video is on Integrated One, Chapter 7, um, D-Day Number 1. So on this first problem, we're trying to find two values. We want to find the missing side length, which is our x, and then the angle, and then name the property. So um, if I'm looking at the x, the x is a side. So we know that this side is 4. This side is x, this side is 8, and this side right here is our hypotenuse. So since this is a right triangle, we're going to use Pythagorean, which is the following, a squared plus b squared, let me write that a little smaller, um, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So this is going to be four squared plus x squared is equal to eight squared. So we get 16 plus x squared is equal to 64. We're going to subtract 16 from both sides and we get 48. And then we're going to take the square root of 48 And when I take the square root of 48, I end up with a 6.93 about. And so x is 6.93. And we got this by using Pythagorean theorem. Now, the second part of this question is to find our y. And so for this, we're dealing with our angles. So we have a 60 degree angle, we have this 90 degree angle, and then we're trying to find that y. So the angles in the triangle add up to 180 degrees. So I can go <clears throat> 180 minus 60, minus 90 is equal to y. And when I do that math, I get 30 is equal to y. So this is gonna be 30 degrees. And the reason is I call it the triangle angle sum theorem. And what that means is the angles in the triangle add up to 180 degrees, okay? So what that means is, again, angles in triangle add to 180 degrees. On two and three, um, we, again, are going to try to find a missing value here and state what property we use. So in this situation, we have two intersecting lines with opposite angles, um, which are called vertical angles. And so we know that vertical angles are congruent. So that means I can take 3x plus 60 and set it equal to uh, 2x plus 80. So I'm gonna subtract 2x from both sides. I'm going to subtract 80 from both sides, I'm sorry, 60 from both sides, and I get x is equal to 20 degrees. So on number three, um, again, we're dealing with the angles in the triangle. So we have this angle here is 120. This angle here, 2x minus 40, and then this third angle here. So I can take 2x minus 40 plus 120 plus x plus 5 is equal to 180 degrees. And I'm going to clean up um, what we have on this left side. So I'm going to clean up 2x plus x is 3x. A negative 40 plus 20 is 80 plus 5, we get 85. 
is equal to 180. Um, I'm going to, div uh, sorry, subtract 85 from both sides. And so I'm going to get 3x is equal to 95. Divide both sides by 3. And when we do 95 mm -hmm. divided by 3 is 31.6 repeating. And that's our answer. On 4a, b, and c, um, we're going to be trying to decide if these uh, triangles are congruent. And just a little reminder, um, what we are looking for is the following. Um, side, side, side. Side, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. Angle, side, angle. And hypotenuse leg. So in this situation, I am going to um, mark like things. So this TA is the same as OS, that line segment. Okay. Um, I know that angle T is congruent to angle O. I also know that TL is congruent to PO. And so in this situation, when you're looking at this, we have side, angle, side, side, angle, side. So our reason is side, angle, side. And then when I'm matching things up, since they said T, A, L, T is this green angle here. That matches with O. So I'm going to write O. A is this one here at the end of the blue which is the same as S. And then L is gonna be the same as P. On B, um, angle I, T, N, which is that angle right here, is gonna be congruent to angle A, T, N. So those two angles are congruent. We also know that angle I is congruent to angle A. And then we have a third bit of information. This line right here is going to be um, congruent in both triangles. So looking at this, we're gonna have angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side. So our reason is gonna be angle, angle side. And what goes with T in this top one that I'm going to shade blue and the bottom one that I'm going to shade green. Okay. So in the blue one, angle T is going to correspond in the green one to T. So I'm going to put a T. Um, I corresponds with A, so I'm going to put A next and then N with N. On C, first thing we want to notice is it is a right triangle. So we have that angle. We have this side here, which is the same as this side here. Um, that is a leg. And we have this side here. Um, P. N, which is going to be, sorry, T, N, which is going to be the same as this one here, A, P. So looking at this at first glance, it looks like it's angle side side, which is not appropriate, but this is a right triangle. So I have a hypotenuse and I have a leg. So this is going to be hypotenuse leg and angle I, which is a right angle is going to go with angle M. So this is gonna be triangle. I'm just gonna write down here, triangle. And I goes with M. 
and N, which is right here between the pink and the orange, goes with P. And then T is going to go with A. So on number five, we know that this right here is 120 degrees, which means that this is going to be 60 degrees because they add to 180. Um, this is going to be 60 degrees because those are vertical. Number one and number five, five is going to be 60 degrees because they're corresponding. And seven is going to be 60 degrees because it's corresponding with three, but it's also vertical with uh, five. So this is a vertical, that's going to be 120. This is going to be alternate interior, so that's 120. And then this one's 120. So measure of angle one is 60 degrees. Measure of angle six is 120 degrees. Measure of angle eight is 120 degrees. And it says, why is angle three congruent to angle six? So the two angles I'm looking at, three and six. And those are not going to be congruent. So that's not congruent. Um, they are same side interior angles. And same side interior angles add to 180 degrees. Okay, they're supplementary. So angle three and angle six are not going to be uh, congruent. So on number six and seven, we are going to be doing um, perpendicular bisector. Okay, I'm going to do this with Cami. So I am going to get a circle. And let me just get this circle here. And I'm going to move it so that my center is at A but it goes the, to more than half. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this and paste this. And I'm gonna move this. So that my center is at the other end point. And then the two points that these cross at, I'm going to get a line and I'm going to draw that line through those two points. And that is going to be my perpendicular bisector. For number seven, um, I'm going to get a circle. And let's say that's my circle. So I'm going to center it at vertex A. And then I'm going to copy this. and paste this. And I'm going to move it to where this point here intersects and this point here intersects. So um, again, this circle right here, let me just move this for a sec. That circle is going to be centered at one 
point of intersection right here. And then I'm going to copy and another one and I'm going to move it so that this center is at the other point of intersection. And then the point where both of those intersect. So right here and right here, I'm going to draw a line through those two points. And let me just re-grab this. And that teal line is going to be my angle bisector. Okay, on number eight, um, we want to find um, the length of AB. So um, I'm going to go to negative three, one, two, three, four, and two, negative one. And then I want to find the distance between these two points. So I'm going to draw a slope triangle. And we want to know Um, find those values. So this right here, one, two, three, four, five. This is five. One, two, three, four, five. This is five. And so I'm going to do Pythagorean. And so I get five squared plus five squared is equal to, let's say, I'm going to call it D for D, D squared for distance. Um, and I get 25 plus 25 is equal to D squared. So 50 is equal to D squared. And then I'm going to take the square root of 50. And when I take the square root of 50, I get a 7.07. .07. Um, on number nine, um, so I know LD. Yeah, draw this in better. So LD is congruent to NA. So those two sides are congruent. And um, we also have this angle D congruent to angle A. And then I'm going to have this angle right here, which I'll do in, let's say, purple. Um, at that angle, let me trace it in green for a second. I could call LID. And then that's going to be congruent to um, NA. I'll do it in a different color. And um, IA. So that's congruent because of vertical angles. So then looking at this, I'm going to have uh, side angle angle or angle side angle um, as my reason. And what allows me to do this is I know that LD is congruent to NA. And that was given. I know that angle D is congruent to angle A. That was also given. I know that angle LID is congruent to, uh, to angle NIA. And the reason is vertical angles. are congruent. And then I can say as my last statement 
that triangle DLI is congruent to triangle A N I. And the reason is angle, angle, side. And then on the last page, we have review. And so in number 11, this is saying that we're multiplying by three and our first term is two. So I'm gonna have two and then times by three, six, and then times by three, um, 18 and so on. And that is gonna be letter D. On number 12, solving the system, I'm gonna multiply this bottom by two. And so when I do, the top equation is gonna stay 5x plus 2y equals 16. The bottom equation is gonna be 6x minus 2y is equal to 28. I add those two equations together. I get 11x is equal to um, 44. So x is gonna be four. So that's gonna to have to be B because that's the only one that has four for the X. On number 13, we're gonna use equal values and set these equal to each other. So two X minus nine equals three X minus 14. I'm going to subtract two X. I'm gonna add 14. So I get X is equal to five. Now they want us to pick one of these values here. We, so we need to find our y. So let's say I go y is equal to two times five minus nine. So I'm gonna get 10 minus nine or one. So my answer is C. On number 14, um, if we're talking about domain, domain is going from this line, which is that when my X is negative three to this line where my X is two, and that is gonna be this one. My range is gonna be how low it goes, which is negative three to how high it goes, which is four. And that's gonna be this one. And then the equation of the line is going to be the third one, um, which is gonna be y equal negative seven fifths x. Um, this is a line. We want to know which of these points is a solution. So um, if I plot zero, zero, you see that that's not on the line, so that's not gonna be the answer. If I plot zero four, I end up right here. It's on the line, so that's gonna be a solution. Um, if I plot zero, negative two, zero, negative two is gonna be down here. That's not gonna be on it. And two comma six, two comma six is right here. That's not gonna be on it. So my answer is B. On 16, we wanna know what does X need to be for F of X to be four? So if f of x is four, I'm gonna come through here and see what x gives me that. And the x that gives me that is five. So five is gonna be my answer. And that's the end of this video.